So you have a new climbing rose that you're ready to get planted into the ground and trained onto a trellis. We're going to walk through a few basic steps on proper planting location and tips for making sure that that rose climbs onto the trellis and produces beautiful blooms top to bottom. First question to ask yourself when planting a climbing rose is how much coverage do you want on the trellis? Do you want to allow the rose to take over the whole trellis or do you want something that's a little more airy and visible through? Um, that will dictate how many roses you actually plant on the trellis. On a trellis this size, five feet wide, we have one rose. The effect here will be rose that climbs top to bottom, produces beautiful blooms, but will still be able to see through the trellis to the rest of the garden. So two roses planted on this trellis, one at each corner, will fill in and as we crisscross and weave the vines up the trellis, it's going to create a massive plant and leaves that will hide anything behind the trellis. So it's going to cover up this eyesore of storage area behind us. It might seem self-evident, but you want to really make sure you plant your rose really close to the trellis. And by that we mean almost underneath the trellis. That's going to allow the main canes as they come up to be very close and really easy to tie on versus being out here and having to train them back. That rose is naturally going to want to grow straight up. On a climbing rose, there's two types of canes that you need to know about. There's a main cane, and that is the cane that starts at the ground and works its way all the way up the trellis. And then there's the lateral cane. The lateral canes are these smaller canes, like these, that come off of a main cane and what are, produce blooms. If your main cane is going upright, it will only produce lateral blooms at the top. But if you train your main cane at less than a 45 degree angle, more horizontal, all of these lateral canes that come up will produce blooms. So we'll use a zip tie here and we're going to take this main cane at less than a 45 horizontally and we're going to go ahead and just zip tie this right on. The trick with zip ties is to not get them too tight. This rose, is, this cane is going to grow and expand and you want to make sure there's room for it to grow in there. Cut the tail off and we're good to go. As you begin to weave your canes back and forth and get your rose to fill in really tight on this trellis, you'll find that it's really difficult to differentiate between your main canes and your lateral canes. They all start to look the same. So I've gone to the base of this rose and traced out where my main cane was and I've determined that this is the main cane. These are actually lateral canes coming off the main. Now these are producing blooms and as those begin to bloom out these canes may start to hang out and we may want to go ahead and deadhead these. But you never want to deadhead your main cane. So in order to be able to identify your main cane I recommend taking a small piece of ribbon or twine and just tying this right on to the main cane. This makes it easy to identify when you come back in a couple months and do some deadheading or some more training of this onto the trellis. For more information on growing roses and to shop for own root roses for your yard, visit us at heirloomroses.com.